My brother framed Maine to start his illicit business. Now he's asking for my help as he faces jail time. This is about my brother who is seven years elder to me. He has always been a golden child, the dream child of every parent. Mind you, he was not as perfect as he portrayed. He was an imposter and manipulator who knew the tricks to get away with what he wanted. And my parents were so blinded by his mannerisms and charisma that they never even tried to question any of his actions. I'm 36, a mem working as an office executive in a legal firm. It is not a very high-paying job, but a decent one. But I have immense gratitude for my work and the life I was able to build for myself. If you know my history, it would be hard to believe that I would ever overcome my miserable life and make a living. You see, I come from a renowned family. My great-grandfather was one of the first few drug manufacturers in the city. He had many children and grandchildren which led to us having a huge family and now that manufacturing business has been divided into several subunits which are taking care of my father, my uncles, and several other are second and third cousins of the family. So my father inherited a medical warehouse from where the medicines are supplied to retail chains and individual drug stores. Coming to my generation, we are two brothers. My elder brother, who would be the subject in the subsequent part of my story, is a doctor and I. The younger one is no one. Yeah, I hold no family portfolio, nor do I have any medical degree which my family wanted me to have. In fact, I hold no reputational degree that is suitable for my family's legacy. I'm just a graduate who somehow crawled to the college finish line. Not very proud to say this, but I completed my three-year college program in five years. Was I dumb? Perhaps I was a loser with zero self-esteem. While I'm not trying to whitewash myself, it's true that my parents had a lot to contribute towards my almost failing life. So as I said, my elder brother has been a golden child ever since he was a kid. He was a school topper, but won medals and trophies for academics and sports, and helped dad at the warehouse while still in school. He was slash is the epitome of intelligence and goodness. He's seven years elder to me, so by the time I even understood what competition was, he had set the bar so high that I never aimed to match it. I had given up even before trying. I knew I could never be as good as him so I'll never even tried. In that way I was never jealous of him or had any bad feelings for him. As far as I remember, we shared a pretty normal and healthy bond as brothers. Growing up, I mostly found him to be busy with his own stuff, studies, work, and friends. You can well imagine growing up with a golden child like my brother. I was subjected to constant comparison and mockery by my family and relatives, and even the teachers in the school. That's what happens when you go to the same school as your topper brother. I was an average student, unlike my brother who was a topper, so I wasn't good at sports either. I wasn't overweight but not that fit to be picked up by the school team. I was mocked and ridiculed for being good at nothing. In that situation, I needed a coping mechanism, which I found in the company of bad boys. I got involved in every sort of mischievy activity in high school. Since I had access to prescription-free drugs, I got popular in the bad boys group. I used to supply stuff from my father's warehouse and was even caught twice. I was severely punished and grounded by my parents. Stealing added another feather to my cap. I was officially declared the black sheep of the family. Instead of grounding me, if they paid attention to my psychology, my life would have been different today. After high school, I was forced by my parents to take a course in May Corson, but I refused. I knew that I suck at studying. I took up an accounting degree which annoyed my parents. They despised me for choosing a substandard career. There are a total of 11 doctors in my extended family and relatives followed by several nurses and other healthcare professionals. Anything below a nursing degree is considered menial here. Dad refused to fund my education and I had to opt for an education loan. When I was leaving home for college, Dad said that he would be providing me with pocket money only until college. After that, I'll be on myself to pay off my college debt. I said cool. I wasn't that diligent either to be able to take my insult as a motivation to work hard and prove myself. Instead, I hit rock bottom in my college. I knew I was not going to get anything from my parents further. If there be any miracle, they might give some peanuts money from their inheritance but pretty sure that the meaty balls would go to my golden brother. So I decided to live my life to the fullest in college, got into even worse company of dudes, got into substance and took five years to complete a three-year college program. Didn't undertake any part-time job to fund my education, just wasted myself in all sorts of illicit activities. After college, I had no plans what to do in life. I remained in my delusional world for another six months until I was kicked out of the college dorm. I tried finding an office job but was never able to crack any interviews because of my poor skills and casual attitude. So I lived in a shanty dingy apartment with one of my friends until he asked me to move out. Hopped onto another friend's couch for a few more months. 
It got worse when the bank started chasing me to repay the education loan. It didn't have money for a hamburger. How was I supposed to pay off my debt? Dad had stopped sending me money long back. So I've been as my own. I was my own. And he's in fact a. So I took some odd jobs, but the money was so low that it could barely keep my body and soul intact. I begged and borrowed time from bank officials until they sent two heavily built collectors at my door, who pulled me by my collar and gave me one 515 day ultimatum to pay the mortgage. I was shit scared. I couldn't run anywhere. I had nowhere to run. I called up my mom and begged her to help me out, but she hung up on me saying I deserve this. So then I called up my only hope in that situation, my brother. He was a successful doctor by then and had his own clinic. He said he needs time to think about it. I told him about my urgency and promised to return the money as soon as possible. I know I was a wasted guy who couldn't be trusted with money. So if he had refused to help me in that situation, it would still have been better but what he did was far from my imagination. So a week later he called me. He said he was able to arrange the money and asked me for my account details. So without thinking twice, I gave him my bank details with PIN and password. Yeah, naive me, sort of a maybe vulnerable me. The next day I received a text message that my account had been credited with money, which was like 4x of my entire education loan. I was surprised. I called him up to ask why he would send so much more money than I needed. He said he liquidated his asset, and the entire amount came to my bank account. He said he would leave the money I needed and transfer the remaining to his account. Hum, I didn't. For that, he needed full access to my account. I readily agreed and gave him all the data he liked, he said. He withdrew all the money leaving the amount I would need to pay off my debt. I paid the debt and felt like a mountain being lifted off my shoulder. My happiness was short-lived because within an hour I got a call from my dad, yelling and abusing me like a maniac and asking me to take the first bus home. He was accusing me of stealing the money from the family's business account. I had no clue what he was talking about. Uh, it didn't even hit me that my brother would have been involved in this theft, and I was just being a scapegoat until I reached home and witnessed the chaos myself. And I was welcomed by a harsh slap by my father, followed by something I could only describe as mental abuse. They accused me of siphoning off the business fund and using it to pay off my debt. I was astonished. They knew I was struggling to pay off the debt. Dad noticed suspicious activities in his business account, and when he reported to the bank, he got the information that the money was transferred to my account. Dad told my brother about it, and he made up the story that I had stolen that money. He also pulled up my bank statement to frame me as a thief. I was lost for words when he meticulously described the details. My entire extended family was present, and I could see disgust in their eyes. I fumbled and whispered, Bro, it was you who transferred that money to my account. He acted as if I mentioned some ghost. He denied having any involvement in this. I called up the bank asking for the information in whose account the money was transferred from my account. So the official said it was some untraceable private account and had no details. Whereas the business account of my father clearly showed that the money was transferred to my account. So my brother used my details to transfer the money from my father's business account to mine and then later transferred the money to his private account without leaving any footprints. Wow. I couldn't believe that he would stoop so low to fulfill his selfish motives. I pulled him at the corner and asked him to come clean, but he was an imposter. He denied everything. My parents came to his rescue. He was their golden child. Some of the family members believed that I couldn't steal money, but they had no reason to support me. They asked me to get the money back, but I had no means to trace it. Dad was calling up the cops to sue me, but brother stopped him saying it would ruin the family's reputation. How smart of him. I thought it was his guilt, but no, he was just being smart. If cops and the judiciary got involved, they might have dug the truth that my brother was behind all this. He posed this as a favor to me for saving him from cops and asked me to disappear from their lives. Despite being innocent, I felt like a criminal in everyone's eyes. I couldn't face anyone present there and ran away. So I was literally running on the streets bawling. I still remember that evening when I was aimlessly running with my eyes and face covered with tears that I could barely see anything. I ultimately slumped on the sidewalk and cried like a baby. I walked for almost an hour before taking a bus to my condo. That day I pledged to never return to my family again and take charge of my life. It took me eight years to build a decent life for myself. It wasn't easy but the fire and anger kept me going. I wanted to avenge my humiliation, expose my brother and rip my family apart, but I also knew I was powerless in front of them. My brother and my family had everything at their disposal to destroy me and I had nothing. I didn't even have the money to afford therapy. 
I had almost forgotten most of this history, but something happened a few days back which brought back all the harrowing memories of the past. My sister-in-law visited me. Yes, my brother's wife. She showed up unexpectedly at my workplace. I couldn't recognize her. I had blocked all my family and relatives on social media. She somehow scavenged my coordinates and found me. She was here to seek help. She wanted my help to rescue my brother from prison time. He was being investigated on the charges of selling prohibited drugs. I asked her if she knew about our history. She nodded yes. She in fact confessed that brother had used that money to set up a side business of manufacturing and selling prohibited and illicit drugs. It got reported by someone. Brother got the hint from his accomplice and shut down the business a few months ago but cops are investigating it and it's just a matter of time before he is arrested. I asked her why she had to run to me when there was an army of people in our family who could help her. She said that cops had shut down all the warehouses of my father and they are also being investigated. Cops suspect that dad is also hands in gloves with brother in this business. Their bank account has also been frozen. Extended family and relatives have curled up their sleeves to safeguard themselves. Of course they don't want to be involved in this mess and suffer. But why me? Because I work for a legal firm and I can request an attorney to fight for my brother. Really? They think so? I'll help them out when he falsely framed me, humiliated me, and got me kicked out. She begged for my help for the sake of her children. I asserted that my family is dead to me and politely asked her to leave. My mind was worked up after she left. The next day my mom called me. She pleaded with me to help them out, because as a family we should have each other's back. I burst out laughing on hearing her preachings. I asked her where was her family bonding shits for all these years when they treated me unwanted for all my life. She said, forget about the past, it's time to be together as a family. Such a hypocrite. I hung up on her and asked her not to call me again but she dialed me again after an hour. She also left a voice note, don't be a baby and act like an adult for once. Yeah, that's right, I'm a baby. I don't intend to help them at all but I don't feel good about their misery either. I had spent many months planning to avenge my humiliation and now when karma is biting them, I don't feel happy about it. Update 1. The outreach and response to my post blew my mind. Thanks for all the empathy. Means a lot. You guys were right in saying that he deserved everything he got and my parents also deserved to taste the bitterness they had been harnessing. Call me devil but I decided to use this as an opportunity to avenge my humiliation. So when my mom called me next for help, I said I would come home and discuss this. I went home and they were all so loving and caring for our me. I said I'm not here for any BS. So brother had moved in with wife and children to parents' house as his own property has been seized until the investigation is over. They all pleaded for help. Brother cried and tried to hug me. I blocked him, gesturing him to stay away. I said years ago when I was pleading for help, no one came to my rescue. I was being labeled a thief and chased out of the house. Brother said he was sorry for what he did with teary eyes. I said your crocodile tears and not helping here. I was tried in front of the whole family and relatives so this sorry and confession should also happen in front of everyone. So mom yelled at me for calling for a show at the difficult time. I said not my problem. If they want help, they need to do this. Helplessly they called up everyone pleading with them to come. So most of the relatives had ghosted them and didn't respond. Some of them refused to come to avoid any trouble with the law. Mom had to tell them that it was about me and brother had to confess something in front of everyone. Some of the few uncles and aunts showed up. Some agreed to come for genuine concerns while the gossip mongers were in, with a popcorn tub for some hot spice. They were enough to spread the information to others. Brother confessed in front of everyone that he was the one who stole money from the family business to start his illicit side hustle and made me the scapegoat, and asked him why would he do that to his own brother. He said that dad wouldn't have approved of his business idea, and I was in a vulnerable situation hence, he hatched a plan to exploit me to fulfill his ambitions. He set up his separate manufacturing unit, got his own clinic, and bought a house all before the age of 30. While everyone was praising him for his hard work, it was his treachery which got him everything. My uncle who had a slightly softer spot for me in my childhood days said, I knew he, one, cannot be a thief. He said he was sorry he couldn't help me back then but was proud that I uplifted myself from my rock bottom and didn't succumb to it. That's what the thing is. Everyone wants to ride a rising tide. Dad was like, we did what you demanded, now you ought to help us get out of this. See you I doubt of them praise yo chiugeth. I said I would request someone at my firm to represent the case but it wouldn't be for free. Dad got furious and said that if they had money to pay, they could have hired any other lawyer. Why do they need my help? I said good luck then. I mean what do they expect? That I pay for his attorney to save him prison time when he framed me falsely. 
and made my life a living hell. Us people in a living hell. Dad got agitated and said, Linda, my mom, don't worry, I'll figure out something myself. We wasted so much time seeking help from this piece of shit, me. How could we expect help from him when he has always been a useless ass? So I said at least I'm not a fraudster. Despite the betrayal they got from their golden child, they were still having his back. I warned them to get off his back or be ready to go down with him. I left shortly after that. My work was done. My revenge was taken. I don't know I might have helped my parents to get out of this crap, but I got pissed off to see that they were still supporting my brother. They disowned me and humiliated me for the same theft. You see, they're double standard, so go live with that. Update 2 After that face-off with my family and relatives, a lot of my cousins, uncles, and aunts called me and apologized for not standing up for me. I said it doesn't matter now. No one supported me when I needed it the most. I got to know from them that my brother had been arrested last month on the charges of manufacturing and selling drugs that are not FDA approved. He has been sentenced to eight years of prison time, but his attorney is fighting to reduce the time period. While my dad has not been arrested and his involvement in my brother's illegal business has been ruled out, life is not easy for them. Firstly, his warehouse was seized for more than five to six months, so everything came to a standstill. Also, the health departments have been monitoring him closely with unannounced searches and vigilance leading to mental stress and work disturbances. Getting into legal matters is never a good thing for business owners. No one wants to be associated with such a business. He lost their regular procurers and customers. Some of my relatives said that my parents have aged like 10 years in the last six months and now they regret trusting their golden child so blindly. But they still don't talk about me or have any regrets for what they did to me. I said it was fine. I don't need them now. The uncle closest to my dad said that my parents are now thinking about selling off everything and moving to a different and secluded part of the town, or maybe to the countryside where no one knows them. They are embarrassed by the constant judgment and our rollings of their neighbors and relatives. Syl has moved with her parents because she has nowhere else to go after brother was arrested. I won't say I feel satisfied or super happy about everything, but I'm glad that the truth came out eventually and justice is served to them. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Caught my college GF cheating with frat guys at a party. I snitched to her sorority and she got kicked out. My girlfriend and I both met during our freshman orientation at our university. There was this week-long event for first-year students and she and I were in the same orientation group. My girlfriend and I just clicked and we spent a lot of time together. There was a dance for the freshmen at the end of the orientation week and I went with her as my date. We actually both ended up losing our virginity to each other later that night. Looking back, it was really embarrassing but it was also pretty sweet. We dated for two years while we were in college. I really loved her. Neither of us was in a place to even think about getting married or starting a life together, but we were comfortable with each other. Our university had a vibrant Greek life scene. I have always thought fraternities and sororities were weird, so I had absolutely no intention of joining one. My girlfriend, on the other hand, had been dreaming about joining a specific sorority for years. When she picked out what college she was going to, she knew that she wanted to rush that sorority as soon as she had the chance. During the summer between first and second year, she rushed the sorority that she wanted and ended up getting in. I was happy for her, because I knew it was something that she had really been looking forward to, but I was a little uneasy about the idea of it. This specific sorority was a prime example of why I hated them. Everyone there was like a clone of the others. Her schedule was always so full of things that she was doing with the sorority and her classwork that I rarely got to see her. She was always going to parties, fundraisers, and campus events that the sorority had been planning. I felt like I was getting left behind in some ways. Before, we would talk every day, but after she joined, we barely even texted each other. We finally got together one day for lunch, and I addressed my concerns to her. She told me that it was only temporary, and that as soon as she was fully settled in the sorority things would get back to normal. The last thing she wanted was to break up with me, she said. During that lunch, she started telling me about some of the crazy rules that the sorority had, so that they expected that their sorority sisters would behave in such a way to positively represent the sorority to prospective members. So that meant the way they dressed had to be a certain way, they couldn't go out with certain kinds of men, and they needed to uphold the values of the sorority at all times. Several weeks went by and things between my girlfriend and I weren't improving. I still cared for her and I wanted to be with her. But there was so much distance between us just because she joined that sorority. I didn't want to be the person to tell her not to join or give her an ultimatum, but it was very stressful for me. She texted me one night and invited me to a big frat party that was held annually. Again, I can't stress this enough. I hate Greek life and I had no desire to go to that party. However, I wanted to see my girlfriend. 
I had a work study on campus to help with some events that went on for the undergrads on the weekends, so I told her that I would be there if I could get out of work early. At the beginning of the night, it really wasn't looking like I was going to be able to sew. I texted my girlfriend and told her that. However, the movie that I was screening for the students was not very good and a lot of people ended up walking out before it was over. But I was able to end my shift very early and I figured I would go and see my girlfriend at the party. It was very crowded when I got there and I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know anybody at the party and I was just looking for my girlfriend. I recognized a couple of the other girls from her sorority but I didn't feel very comfortable going up to them to talk. So I walked around the fraternity house and looked for my girlfriend. I made it to the top floor, where there were a few bedrooms. I opened a couple of doors and peeked inside to see if she was there. I was really hoping that she wasn't because the idea of her being in a bedroom in a frat house made me very nervous. I really liked her and I didn't want to get my heart broken over what might be happening behind those closed doors. Unfortunately, it was exactly what I was afraid of. I opened one of the doors and found my girlfriend kissing one guy with another guy behind her kissing her neck. She was topless, and they were all three clearly about to have sex. I just stood there for a minute in shock as I watched. The guy behind my girlfriend actually saw me and yelled at me to get out. That's when my girlfriend opened her eyes and looked at me and rushed to the door to talk to me. I just slammed the door shut in her face and made my way out of the frat house to go back to my room. She was blowing up my phone and trying to get through to me, but I didn't respond. I was hurt by what I saw. Part of me had expected it when I was walking through the hallway, but I was hoping it wasn't going to be real. Um, there had been a lot of distance growing between us since the beginning of the semester, and I guess I knew that we weren't going to last forever. But being cheated on really hurts. In the morning, I sent her a text message and told her that I didn't want to hear any explanations from her and that we were over. There was no excuse that she could have given me that would have made what she did okay. I blocked her number and spent a few days sulking over it before I decided to get back to my normal life. My mind kept wandering back to the code of conduct that she showed me over lunch a few weeks prior. With all of the ridiculous rules, I couldn't help but think that cheating on your boyfriend and having a threesome with two frat guys would be some kind of violation of the sorority's values. I knew how much being in that sorority meant to her and I wanted to hurt her and get revenge in some way. I ended up reaching out to the president of the sorority on Facebook and telling her exactly what happened. I didn't really think it would do anything, but if it could sully her reputation that was enough for me. The president of the sorority just left me on red. A couple of weeks later I got an email from my ex-girlfriend cursing me out. I guess when I told the president about what happened, she decided to tell a lot of other sorority members. Everybody had started gossiping about her and talking about what she did, and the rumors were spreading throughout that she felt so uncomfortable that she ended up leaving. She blamed me for it and told me about a whole host of opportunities she was going to be missing out on because she was no longer in that sorority. I don't know if she thought I was going to feel bad about it or what, but I didn't. In my eyes, that was just the consequences of her actions. If there were jobs that she would miss out on after college, that was entirely her own fault, not mine. So I ended up blocking her email as well and not talking to her for the rest of the time I was in college. There was a brief incident where we were actually in a class together. We realized that on the first day, but when I went back for the next class, she wasn't there. I can only assume she dropped the class because we were in it together. 